We're also following local breaking news on Heckscher Drive. You're looking live from our Sky 4 helicopter. In the past half hour, we learned the Browns Creek Bridge is closed for at least a week because of erosion under the approaches. This is, will mean a major detour for people who travel between Jacksonville and Amelia Island. Without that bridge, there was a long drive using A1A and I-95. And we have crews covering Irma all over northeast Florida, beginning with Lindsay Gardner. She's in Crescent Beach, where a possible tornado ripped through this condo complex. This is a Sky 4 helicopter video just showing some dramatic images. Lindsay. the coast home, but we do flirt with these dangers and doing so right off the water. Take a look at this possible tornado damage you were just showing everyone. This is a condo complex that we believe was hit with a tornado according to the National Weather Service as they are still out surveying this possible tornado, a remnant of Hurricane Irma. And as you can see, destruction everywhere. At least five buildings are destroyed. People were actually inside riding out this storm. If you can believe it, they tell us they wouldn't do that again. But thankfully, no one was injured. Now, this kind of destruction is unique to this property in the terms of the tornado damage. But damage from the hurricane is all over St. Johns County. Right now, emergency management officials are asking that residents and tourists stay off of the beaches as this cleanup effort continues. We also traveled about 25 minutes north into the Davis Shores area of St. Augustine. As you may remember, that area was hit hard by Hurricane Matthew, and so many residents there had just finished the rebuilding process when Hurricane Irma came back along. John Human is unfortunately becoming a self-taught professional at cleaning up from flooding thanks to yet another hurricane. Yeah, I mean, you got to put your head down and go to work. I mean, what else can you do? He and his wife Claire spent fifty to sixty thousand dollars cleaning up after Hurricane Matthew. They still weren't done when Irma hit. We're in the backyard here of the human's home and here on their house, you can clearly see where the water line is from the flooding that came through from Hurricane Irma. Compare that to Hurricane Matthew. They tell me that line was a route right here. Now they don't know what they'll do next. And that's the big question everybody in this neighborhood is, is asking, you know, when is too much too much? And we don't know the answer. We don't know whether we're going to tear it down and build up. Or walk away. The humans did not have flood insurance. Neither did Rob Ellis Peck, who is still in shock. The water veracity, I've never seen anything like it. If, if you can look at this, I thought this was not here. I, I thought, well, this is somebody's styrofoam yard ornament. It's not. It's a boulder. Um, I can't even move it. He owns not one, but two homes in Davis Shores. And for the residents here to go through this again so soon after uh, a year, it's, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving out. Yeah, really am giving out. You know, and I have to tell you, it was so hard to see those residents today feeling so down. I have been in that community for more than a year. I covered them, uh, the damage there in Davis Shores during Hurricane Matthew and again today. And it was, they define what being a neighbor is about. And that is what makes that community so unique. It's more than just the homes. They truly care so much about one another. So that's why they're really struggling in this decision they have coming up because they don't necessarily want to tear the homes down and they don't necessarily want to move because they want to stay there to be a part of that community with each other. Now, the options that they face, some of them can possibly lift the homes up, but I'm told that costs anywhere between 50 and 30 to $60,000 rather. Also, you could bulldoze the house and build another, but think about what that cost. And if people did not have flood insurance during Matthew or Irma, imagine what it would cost for them to get it now if they were even able to qualify. So, so many questions going on there tonight. Also, another hurdle they're facing they still don't have power in Davis Shore, so they can't get that all important equipment in to begin the uh, dehumidifier process to try to dry out those homes. They are hoping and praying the power comes back on in the next two to three days so that they, they can save what 
is possible there. Reporting in Crescent Beach tonight, I'm Lindsay Gardner, Channel 4, the local station. Lindsay, while you've been talking to us behind you, we've been watching people who were moving furniture out of a condo that was that was clearly damaged. I'm guessing that there's no power there either. You're right. There's no power here. There's oh, powers out significantly across St. John's County, all up and down here. You know, I have to tell you, though, power is kind of the least concern I've heard out here uh, at, at this the summer house condo complex. Here, it's really more shock and awe. You go to Davis Shores, they're so concerned about rebuilding and drying out the house. You come here, and these residents just can't believe that Irma brought this possible tornado crashing in to their home. Many of them telling us at 5 o'clock, we shared with you, that they decided to ride the hurricane out because because these buildings were largely untouched by Hurricane Matthew. But again, that is why the warnings from these meteorologists are so important. They keep relaying to everyone. Each storm is not the same. You cannot compare one hurricane to the next. And this is just an excellent reminder of that. So tragically, guys. Lindsay Gardner reporting live from Crescent Beach. Thank you, Lindsay.